Firing patterns are muscle activation sequences. Muscles should contract in an optimal sequence to produce movement at the joints. The following firing patterns are the most commonly disrupted in the athlete. The first firing pattern is trunk flexion. Fingers are placed on the lower abdominals and the client is asked to curl. The rectus abdominis should not contract as shown in this demonstration. Instead, the client should perform the draw-in maneuver so that the lower abdominal muscles are activated and those muscles should contract first. The next firing pattern is hip abduction. The hand is placed on tensor fascia lata, gluteus medius, and quadratus lumborum. The client abducts their leg, and the therapist should feel tensor fascia lata and gluteus medius contracting simultaneously and before the quadratus lumborum. The next firing pattern is hip extension. The client extends their leg from their hip, while the therapist palpates hamstring, gluteus maximus, and opposite erector spinae. The hamstrings, or the gluteus maximus, can contract first, but the erector spinae on the opposite side should not be the first to activate. If the muscle activation sequence is inappropriate, with the gluteus maximus being inhibited and the hamstring firing first, the correction is to activate the gluteus maximus, inhibit the hamstrings, and then reassess. The next firing pattern is knee flexion. The hamstrings should contract first, not the calf muscles, primarily the gastrocnemius. The shoulder abduction muscle activation sequence should be the deltoid contracting first and then the upper trapezius. If the upper trapezius is contracting before the deltoid, the correction is to inhibit the upper trap and to activate the deltoid and then reassess. The next firing pattern is knee extension. It is very important that the vastus medialis oblique is identified. When the knee is extended, this muscle should contract first, closely followed by vastus lateralis. If the vastus medialis oblique does not fire first, then the vastus lateralis is inhibited while the muscle is repeatedly contracted. Then the assessment is repeated. Gait assessment is a method of muscle testing for functional muscle units that work together for coordinating cross-body movement during gait. The most common problem is that muscles do not inhibit when they should, although occasionally muscles will assess weak. The assessment is performed by mimicking the cross-body gait mechanism. Begin by positioning the leg and arm as shown. Apply a resistance force against the leg and assess the arm against it. Reverse and apply a resistance force against the arm and assess the leg against it. 
Both assessments should indicate a strong facilitated muscle response. When the flexors of the hip are contracted against a resistance force, the extensors of the contralateral arm should inhibit and vice versa. When the shoulder extensors are activated, the contralateral hip muscles should inhibit. The procedure will be reversed for the opposite sides. During same side or unilateral assessment, Flexors and extensors should facilitate each other, while activating the hip flexor would inhibit the same side shoulder flexors and vice versa. You are watching a resistance force against the right hip flexors, and then the right arm extensors are assessed. They should hold strong. Reverse and apply resistance force activating right shoulder extensors, and then assess right hip flexors. Apply a resistive force to the right hip flexors and then assess the right shoulder flexors against it. They should inhibit, then reverse. Adductors of the hip and adductors of the shoulders should also facilitate together. If the shoulder muscles are contracted and then the hip adductors are assessed, they should be strong and vice versa. If the shoulder abductors are activated and then the hip adductors are tested, they should inhibit. and vice versa. Flexors of the torso should facilitate hip adduction, and if the extensors are activated, hip abductors should inhibit. Gait reflexes are also activated by eye movement. If a client looks toward their abdomen, flexors are facilitated. But if the client looks up over their head, those same flexors are inhibited. If the client looks back over their head, the extensors will test strong. And when they look down towards their abdomen, those same muscles should be inhibited. The same pattern exists with lateral flexion. If the client looks toward their shoulder and pushes, muscles should be strong. But if they look away from their shoulder and still try to maintain the contraction, the muscles should inhibit. Should an area not inhibit when it is supposed to, the following correction method can be used. In this example, the arm extensor activation should inhibit the hip flexors. But if this does not occur, the correction would be provided by reinforcing the correct pattern until neurologically it functions more normally.